So let's go back to the traditional addressing modes used on uh, PLC5 through Slick 500 and Micrologix. Uh, this is typically how your ladder logic is going to look. There's a B30 here and N70. And what they are is it's a fixed data structure. Uh, the uh, letter typically gives you the uh, data type, so integer, bit, float, etc. And then the next uh, digit will be uh, a file number. It can be anything from uh, 1 to um, 100 or possibly more. Uh, and then finally, uh, an element number. So within N7, we might get 0 through, again, uh, 100, 200, depending on the PLC. Uh, for uh, bits, where we choose uh, bits, bit files like B30, uh, we might have B30 slash 14 to break that down into an individual bit. Uh, note that uh, when you're using this, this type of addressing, you can just enter them straight into GP Pro. You don't have to do any import export. Uh, if you know the name, uh, the designation of the address that you want to use, you can put it uh, straight into GP Pro EX. And that's what I'll show you now. So here I'm about to start a new GP Pro EX project for a GP3000 an AGP 3300T. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is to choose a driver. I'm going to cheat and choose the Rockwell DF1 driver I used recently. I won't go through the communication settings in this presentation because we're going to do a whole separate presentation for that. So instead I'm going to go for a new screen And I'm going to choose an object, in this case a, a data display. And I'm going to place that data display on the screen. Gives me a default bezel and a default uh, numeric format in there. And if I double click it, you'll also see it gives me a default PLC register. We can have up to 16 individual PLCs per driver. By default, the first one is called PLC1. You can change that name to something more applicable. Uh, now I can edit the uh, straightforward PLC address. Then I'm going to try to use all the help available. And that includes the drop down menus. I can choose my N registers, um, my B registers, my timer and counter registers etc and each time I do you'll see that the uh, boxes uh, on the right hand side change so for a counter I by default we're talking about counter 5 number 50 the preset or the actual uh, notice that things like the timer enable uh, and other bits are not shown here that's because they're not applicable for a, a data display um, for a simple uh, B register, I can choose B350, but not the individual bit, because again, this is a, a data display. So they're typically going to show either an integer or a floating point value. Okay, so there's boring old N70. Um, and then I can choose data formats to display that in. That's really all there is to it. Um, I haven't had to import the data from the PLC project because I understand the structure and the numbering system, so I can just type them in. Same is true if I choose uh, something like a, a, a lamp, uh, which would be typically from a bit. And so I put the default lamp on there, and again, it shows me a default bit. Note that this time the uh, file and element number now includes a sub-element, which gives me access to bit 0 through 15. Let me enter that and so. Uh, similarly, I could take a, a data display 
and choose a floating point value. This time I'll choose F80 and I'll make sure that I set my format to suit showing a 32-bit floating point value. If you prefer not to use direct addresses within the project, in other words, if you prefer to use symbolic addressing, uh, GP Pro EX supports this in a couple of different ways. The first one is um, from the symbol variable list. You can type in my symbol and then you can assign based on whether it's a word address or a bit address, a corresponding PLC address using the same syntax as we did before. So this time we enter my bit, specify it as being a bit address, and then again choose an appropriate bit number in the same format. So that's all well and good, and uh, the nice thing about that is that if you uh, are trying to reuse a project on a different PLC, you can actually export this symbol list, modify it for a completely different PLC, re-import it, and reuse it. Another way to use the symbolic addressing is if you have uh, RS logics and you define the symbols within there, assign a symbol such as uh, B30 is bit 3, or time of 4 enable as time of 4 enable. Uh, the accumulated value T41 is second timer. Uh, note that uh, you don't assign a symbol to the entire element, the entire set of elements here. You assign it to the bits or the words appropriately, and that's kind of important. Um, so what you see if you look in the database is the bit address, the symbol, and uh, an optional description. And here the symbol group, which can be used a number of different ways in Iris logics. It's really helpful if you use this to define uh, the uh, element type, either a bit or a word or use bool and int and you'll see why as we try to uh, import this into GP Pro EX uh, shortly. So there's uh, these are the symbols that I've given names to, um, the address, the symbol group is either bool or int and then an optional uh, description. Okay so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to export the database to a CSV file called test.csv and I'm going to put that on my desktop overwrite the existing file and there we have it. Now you'll see that uh, back in GP Pro EX there is actually a utility to both import and export but if we look at the import there is a a GP Pro EX format which allows you to define a lot more fields but when you're importing from another PLC such as the Alan Bradley RS Logix 500 you can um, pass other formats and what happens is this you choose other formats you choose the uh, CSV file that you're interested in and all it's really interested in here is it wants to see four columns which give you the name of the symbol, the type of the symbol, the actual address, and an optional comment. Now it just sticks those four headers up there, but as in this case you can see that that clearly isn't the name column, uh, that one is, and that isn't the address column, that one is. So you can just easily and quickly uh, change those around. So that's now the address column, that's the name column. That also isn't the type column. Um, that actually we found all the way over here. Um, and that lets me, uh, that's that symbol uh, group uh, that I used for this purpose. You can specify for the type format 
a different type of name here. The default is bool and int. You can use something else. Um, and that just saves a lot of time and means you can do this whole process with one, uh, one pass. So with all the columns all together, uh, the majority of these um, don't have names and therefore nothing will happen to them. But if I say OK, then you'll see that all the ones I have defined have now come in and are set up as word addresses, bit addresses with the appropriate symbols and uh, comments attached.